is the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast as we continue our team-by-team preview series here. Our next stop, we are heading to Tampa Bay, but before we get to Tampa, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We appreciate your support. Now let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tom Brady era is over already and we are ushering in a new era, the Baker Mayfield era. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. But let's take a look back on the 2022 season, a season in which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finished with an 8-9 and nine record, scored 313 points, where they surrendered 358 points. Their passing offense was averaging 273.2 yards per game with Tom Brady under center. Their run offense was 32nd in the league. They're only getting about 75.6 per game. Now, as far as their defense is concerned, their pass defense was actually pretty good. They're ninth in the league, allowing just 208 yards, while their run defense was 15th, allowing just 121.1 yards per game. So what went right for the Buccaneers? What went wrong for the Buccaneers last season? And what would end up being Tom Brady's last season in the National Football League? The Buccaneers still managed to make the playoffs despite having a losing record in the regular season. Tampa Bay, they got off to a great start, winning their first two contests before losing five of their next six games. It was the first time in Tom Brady's career in which he would go on to lose eight games in a single season. Now, Tampa Bay, to their credit, would cling on to another NFC South title there with a Week 17 victory over the Carolina Panthers, but then would have their season ultimately end in Dallas on Wild Card Weekend. Now, Brady and the Bucks would become just the fourth team in NFL history to qualify for the postseason despite having a below 500 record over a full season. So turning my attention now to the camp battles that are taking place there in Tampa Bay, we have to see what's going on with this quarterback position. With playmakers like Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, all you have to do is find a way to distribute the ball. But will that be Baker Mayfield? Will that be Kyle Trask? Or will it be John Wolford who could end up under center at some point when this season begins? Mayfield has to be considered to get the first shot at those starter reps heading into week number one after having a great finish to his 2022 season in Los Angeles. But that's not a given. However, Kyle Trasser, he is an unproven commodity at the NFL level. Now, when you look at how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted here in 2023, they went out there and they addressed the defensive tackles position there at pick number 19 with Kalijah Kansi. Offensive tackle in the second round, pick number 48, Cody Mock. Third round, pick number 83, edge rusher Yaya Diaby. In the fifth round, they addressed both the linebacker and the tight end positions with Cervakia Davis and Payne Durham. Sixth round later on, pick 191 was wide receiver Trey Palmer. And in the sixth round, even later than that, pick 196, Jose Ramirez. Now, when we look at these additions and the subtractions to this Buccaneers roster, it starts with the additions here. Baker Mayfield at quarterback, Chase Edmonds at running back, and kicker Chase McLaughlin. Why are we talking about kickers? I don't know, but that's basically all the Tampa Bay Buccaneers added in the offseason. As for the losses to this Tampa Bay organization, it starts at the quarterback position with Tom Brady, who is now the minority owner there in Las Vegas. Leonard Fournette, he's gone. Donovan Smith there, the left tackle, he's gone. Julio Jones, Mike Edwards, Logan Ryan, Akeem Hicks, Cameron Brait, Sean Murphy Bunting, O.J. Howard, Scotty Miller, and Ryan Suckup. All gone. So huge transition period taking place in Tampa Bay just a few seasons after winning a Super Bowl. Now, when we look at some of the moves that they made, what are the best moves? What are the worst moves? And let's start with some positivity here. And the best move that they made was letting Leonard Fournette go. I'm sure that Fournette, he's still going to be able to get the job done wherever he lands up. He's going to provide whatever team he signs with some touches. But with the Bucs not re-signing him and not really bringing in any real competition as of yet for Rashad White, I think it's safe to say the Buccaneers really want to see what they have in this Arizona State product. Like the Cowboys did moving on from Ezekiel Elliott, the Bucs realized that their young back is the future of this team and is clearly the most explosive of the two options. As for the worst move the Bucs made this offseason, will the Bucs end up regretting not selecting Will Levis there when their quarterback position is one that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later? Now, Kalaja Kansi, he's going to project to be a very good player, a difference maker along the defensive line for a long period of time. But can you really go on into the 2023 season trusting Baker Mayfield, trusting Kyle Trask there? That seems to be a little bit of a risky move unless unless the their end game here is to totally tank this season with an eye on 2024 where you've got Caleb Williams and Drake May in that draft. 
Now, what needs to happen for Tampa Bay to have any kind of success here in 2023? I'm not sure there's much positivity that I can really come here. I mean, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it is still a pig. You would need Baker Mayfield to kick it old school here, much like he did from 2018 to 2020 when he threw for over 11,000 yards, 75 touchdowns to just 43 interceptions. Basically, it would be the Jameis Winston era all over. You remember those 40 touchdowns, 40 interception seasons? That's probably the best case scenario for Baker Mayfield with his Buccaneers offense. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if future Hall of Famer Mike Evans was eventually dealt at the NFL trade deadline if the Buccaneers can't get something going. I'm not saying that he's going to get dealt, but it really shouldn't surprise anybody if that is something that happens as the Buccaneers continue to have one eye on their future. Now, I think the best case scenario for Tampa Bay this season would be battling it out with the Arizona Cardinals for the number one overall selection in 2024 and commit to a full rebuild at this point. Tampa Bay has some good pieces they can work with here. They can definitely keep an eye on the future here with Chris Godwin and Rashad White and whatever quarterback that you can bring in here in 2024, you've got some good weapons to build around. Now, when we look at fantasy implications here, just because you're not winning games doesn't mean that you can't produce for fantasy. Here are the top five fantasy assets for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number one, Chris Godwin. The Baker Mayfield effect is on full display in Tampa Bay, forcing the ADP of Chris Godwin down into wide receiver territory. That is a screaming value right now. After returning from injury last season, Godwin had at least six receptions in 15 different contests. Number two, Rashad White here last season. White was seventh in the NFL in targets per snap with 12.8% target share there. And with Leonard Fournette now out of the picture, someone will need to pick up those vacant 83 targets, not to mention Fournette ran the second most routes amongst running backs last season. And number three, Mike Evans. Listen, Dave Canales did wonders for Geno Smith last season there. He was the quarterback coach. Now he gets to work with Baker Mayfield. That's the offensive coordinator here in Tampa Bay, which is key for Evans looking to reach 1,000 yards for the 10th straight season to start off his career i'll say it right now mike evans is a hall of famer now evans and godwin are among the top wide receiver duels in the nfl but are they good enough to overcome baker mayfield and his past number four Cade otten with Fournette's vacated targets, we expect White, he's going to get a majority of those, but also Auden should benefit from the short passing game there, coming off a 42 reception season last year. Tampa Bay will need Auden to step up big time here in year number two. And number five, Russell Gage. Hey, that's it. We're hitting the bottom of the barrel here when we're talking about offensive players for fantasy. Russell Gage, Tom Brady may have handpicked Gage to be a Buccaneer. Unfortunately, injuries limited Gage to just 13 games, and Brady is now retired. Gage is just two years removed from his time in Atlanta, that saw him average four and a half receptions over the final three contests of that season. So who's that one player on this Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster that you need to make sure is on your fantasy roster? It is still Chris Godwin. Yes, he is still the one. He is still the one player that you can trust. And if Baker Mayfield it can exceed expectations, now remember, Mayfield has been injured for a good majority of the last two to three seasons, then Chris Godwin is going to be the reason why he succeeds and why Chris Godwin continues to have success. Now, speaking of injured, Godwin is now a full season removed from his own ACL tear. And after a slow start in 2022, he finished strong and he enters 2023 at 100%. If Godwin can set career highs in receptions and targets coming off an ACL injury, then he can certainly take another step, even if he has to deal with Baker Mayfield. Now, the biggest bust on this team, if I'm in on Chris Godwin, that means I'm probably out on Mike Evans. I love Mike Evans. I want him to succeed, but I'm not sure that Baker Mayfield is capable of supporting two 1,000-yard receivers. It's not impossible. I mean, he did it with Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry, but he accomplished that way back in 2019, and I highly doubt that he's capable of doing it anymore. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong, and I hope that offensive coordinator there, Dave Canales, can get Baker Mayfield on that Geno Smith program there just so I can see Evans hit 1,000 yards one more time and extend that record of 1,000-yard seasons being his career to that 10-game mark. Now, the best fantasy value on Tampa Bay right now, it's Rashad White. I can't trust Mayfield pushing the ball down the field, but I do know that he's more than capable of dumping it off to his uber-athletic running back. I mean, history would dictate that Baker Mayfield's not capable of doing it because he doesn't really like dump off the ball. He's more of a YOLO kind of guy. But if he wants to succeed, if this Tampa Bay team is going to have success, they need to get the balls into Rashad White's hands. Now, in standard leagues, 
I may kind of fade uh, white here a little bit, but, but in PPR at RB24, that is good value, especially when you look at White's receiving production, along with all those vacated opportunities from Leonard Fournette. There's no competition in this Bucks backfield. He's athletic, and he is a proven pass catcher. Now, when we talk about sleepers here, anything free is worth saving up for. And right now, Trey Palmer is free. I mean, he's literally free even in rookie drafts right now, like undrafted territory type free. If things go south for the Buccaneers and they move on from Mike Evans, and remember, Russell Gage was a Tom Brady guy. He's now retired. The Bucks brass, they're the ones who drafted Palmer. They're the ones that didn't necessarily want to bring in Russell Gage. But when we talk about Trey Palmer, what are we, they're going to want to see what they have in this rookie. They're going to want to see what they're investing in at some point. And Trey Palmer is one of those pass catchers that can stretch of the field, much like Marquise Goodwin did back in the day for Seattle. And hey, guess what? Dave Canales, he knows Marquise Goodwin from his days in Seattle. You've got a receiver who can run a 4-3-3 there, and he fits what Canales wants to do. Palmer's the kind of receiver that's going to stress defenses on those slants, on those crossers. Bottom line is, for the Bucks to have any success, it comes down to Baker Mayfield in 2023. It comes down to Dave Canales proving that he may be a quarterback whisperer. The same guy who got Geno Smith to the top of the league last season needs to work his magic one more time. But can he do it with Baker Mayfield? That's the question. There are pieces in place for this team to be successful. They just need a quarterback to pull it all together.